Hello friends, welcome to this episode of Storytime. Today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, this book called Brother Eagle, Sister Sky. This is a book that I enjoy reading to my students every single year. I think it's such an important, um, important story, important piece of, of writing. I want to tell you a little bit about it before I start. So, it says that the paintings are by Susan Jeffers and they are extraordinary. There's paint with etching and there are pictures within pictures. I wish I could put this book in your hands and I'm gonna to try to show it as much as I can to the screen so you can see the images within the images. Um, but if you ever see this book around, be sure to take a close look at the pictures. Now the author is Chief Seattle. Did you know that Seattle was named after a chief? Yes. Uh, in fact, Seattle, it was, the spelling was changed and I can't remember what the original spelling was, but Chief Seattle was the chief of the Duwamish and the Suquamish people in and around the Seattle area. And as uh, white people of European descent and also people from other lands came into the area and um, they wanted more and more of the lands that are ancestral and traditional to the Duwamish and the Suquamish people. And there was a lot of war and strife and conflict um, about that. And eventually the, uh, the people, the Duwamish and the Suquamish uh, were forced from war to sign over their land to the US government. And this um, book tells what Chief Seattle said after that signing ceremony had happened. Now one thing to keep in mind is that he was speaking in his traditional language and he his words were translated and then after his words were translated they were changed a little bit here and there. They're not as exact and original words. There were some interpretations put on them so I want to say that first out of the gate but these words are are what we can closely to um, identify was his message in that time. Brother Eagle, Sister Sky. This is a preface that I'm going to skip over for now. How can you buy the sky? Chief Seattle began. How can you own the rain and the wind? My mother, my mother's mother, to, my mother told me, every part of this earth is sacred to our people. Every pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every meadow and humming insect are all holy in the memory of our people. My father said to me, I know the sap that courses through the trees as I know the blood that flows in my veins. We are a part of the earth and it is part of us. The perfumed flowers are our brothers and sisters. The bear, the deer, the great eagle, these are our brothers. The rocky crests, the meadows, the ponies, all belong to the same family. The voice of my ancestors said to me, the shining waters that moves in the streams and the rivers is not simply water, but the blood of your grandfather's grandfather. Each ghostly reflection in the clear waters of the lakes tells of memories in the life of our people. The water's murmur is the voice of your great-great-grandmother. The rivers are our brothers. They quench our thirst, they carry our canoes and feed our children. You must give to the rivers the kindness that you would give to any brother. Can you see the face and the reflection in the water? The voice of my grandfather said this to me, the air is precious, 
It shares its spirit with all the life it supports. The wind that gave me my first breath also received my last sigh. I'm gonna read that again. The wind that gave me my first breath also received my last sigh. You must keep the land and the air apart and sacred as a place that where one can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow flowers. If you look carefully, you can see faces in the rocks of ancestors and also in the trees. When the last red man and woman have vanished in, with their wilderness and their memory is only a shadow of a cloud moving across the prairie, will the shores and forests still be here? Will there be any spirit of my people left? My ancestors said this to me, the earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. What do you think of that? The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Look carefully at this page. Can you see the forest that's been cut down? This page says, the voice of my grandmother said to me, teach your children what you have been taught. The earth is our mother. What befalls the earth befalls the sons and daughters of our earth. Befalls is a word that means happens to. So he's saying what happens to the earth happens to the sons and daughters of the earth. Hear my voice and the voice of my ancestors, Chief Seattle said, the destiny of your people is a mystery to us. Remember, he's talking to the, um, the US government and the settlers. What will happen when the buffalo are all slaughtered? When the wild horses are tamed? What will happen when the secret corners of the forest are heavy with the scent of many men? When we view the ripe hills, when the view of the ripe hills is blotted by talking wires, talking wires like telephone wires. Where will the dark thicket be? Gone. Where will the eagle be? Gone. And what will, ha and what will happen when we say goodbye to the swift pony and the hunt? It will be the end of living and the beginning of survival. Here's that same forest and there's a family over here planting trees. This we know, all things are connected like the blood that unites us. We did not weave the web of life. We are merely a strand in it. What we do to the web, we do to ourselves. We love this earth as a newborn loves its mother's heartbeat. If we sell you our land, care for it as we have cared for it, hold it in your mind, the memory of the land as it was when you receive it. Preserve the land and the air and the rivers for your children's children and love it as we have loved it. I know that in your groups now you're gonna be taking a minute to reflect on the story um, but I want to read just a little bit about, um, uh, this is a note from the author, what she says at the end. She says, the origins of Chief Seattle's words are partly obscured by the mists of time. Some call his words a letter and some a speech. What is known is that Chief Seattle was a respected and peaceful leader of one of the Northwest Indian nations. In the mid 1850s, when the government in Washington DC wanted to buy the lands of his exhausted and defeated people, he responded in his native tongue with a natural eloquence stemming from his oral tradition. His words were transcribed by Dr. Henry A. Smith, who knew him well, and that transcription was interpreted and rewritten more than once in this century. Joseph Campbell adapted and brought Chief Seattle's message to a wider audience when he appeared um, in a series 
and a book called The Power of Myth. And she says, I too have adapted Chief Seattle's message for Brother Eagle, Sister Sky. What matters is that Chief Seattle's words inspired and continue to inspire a most compelling truth. In our zeal, that means enthusiasm, to build and possess, we may lose all that we have. We have come late to environmental awareness, but there is a thundering message delivered a century ago by many of the great Native American chiefs, among them Black Elk, Red Cloud, and Seattle. To all the Native American people, every creature and part of our earth was sacred. It was their belief that to waste or destroy nature and its wonders is to destroy life itself. These words were not understood in their time by many. Now they haunt us. Now they have come true. And before it is too late, we must listen. That was written, uh, this afterword was written by Susan Jeffers about her, her effort to capture the words of Chief Seattle. I know that you're going to spend some time now in your groups talking about this book and reflecting and responding. Thank you, friends.